what people really need in order to be effective is they need strategy, training, and guidance. Most people think about the transaction as a line. I, right. It goes from like, someone having no idea who I am and not working with me to nurturing them to all of a sudden them working with me and then that transaction over and a past client. But really we have to visualize as a whirlpool because yeah. yes, like transactions come out of it, but really like, you know, the relationships that we build, you know, with people that we're currently transacting with, people that we have transacted with in the past, those relationships we want to maintain forever. If we knew, if all of us were thinking about what is best for us long term? We humans are wired back to like the caveman days to only think about what is going to be a benefit for us in the short term because the long term didn't exist. Like our ancestors were more worried about getting eaten by a saber toothed tiger than thinking about, you know, all right, well, do I have a roof over my head in six months? Like that, that just wasn't part of their frame of mind. You're listening to the number one real estate podcast in the world. We talk with real estate professionals all across North America about their wins, their losses, their lessons and stories help you win in your local market today. My name's Cody from Sheridan Street. I'm joined with Vikram Deal of the Real Estate Sales Academy. Vikram is hooked up to a breathing machine. He's having a hard time breathing today. If you're listening on iTunes, you're listening on Spotify, just know that uh, this, this episode is sponsored by Vikram's Breathing Machine. Vikram, I hope you're doing well. I hope that you are alive, you're well, and that you're breathing fluidly. If you listen to iTunes and you don't know what I'm talking about, go to YouTube and subscribe on YouTube to the Our Asian Podcast. If you're listening to iTunes, you're driving right now, I encourage you to leave us a review if you get any value out of what we do. I think we're well Jesus over to Christ, episodes. Cody, you are plugging and plugging like you've never plugged before. This is great. Keep going. Yeah. I'm selling. I'm trying to sell the RE Agent podcast, the number one podcast in the world. I'm trying to get a sponsor, like for God's sake, man. 200, 200 episodes later, yeah. I have put I have put a lot of uh, goodwill out into the universe now. Now I'm making yes. the ask here. Like, I, I, subscribe, do all the things on iTunes. Leave a comment, Spotify, share with a friend. Leave a comment, share with a friend. You know, if you actually want to uh, make money in uh, the real estate space, you would listen to this podcast. So that's how I feel. No, I agree, yeah. man. This is the episode number 200 and I lost count after five. Um, I had five on one hand, five on the other hand. I had five toes on one foot, five toes on the other foot. After that, I was like, okay, well, that's a lot of episodes. And I believe we covered that in the first 30 days. Mm -hmm. Actually, the first uh, first four weeks, we were at 26 episodes, I think. So we're just, uh, you know, just cruising along, not providing any value to anybody in the real estate space. So do not listen to this because- we have not had amazing people like Sharon and Tamir and Raquel and Arit and, you know, people doing 600 transactions a year on giving you their greatest tips for free. You probably don't want those. So you should actually yeah, we haven't had that. unsubscribe yeah, you, now. You, yeah. Like you should especially unsubscribe if you don't want to make money. Yes, like, so it, like if you don't want to make money, like then this podcast is not for you. So Enough I, shit I, talking, I figured, Cody. We got to stop this shit talking. Good Lord. <laughs> Uh, what's going on, bro? Tell me what's good in your world right now. What's new? What's good about? I'll be a funny what's, story. What's Let, let's entertain the people. Let's entertain the people. Can we tell Man, the I, funny story that just happened right now in the living room. And uh, how, my how my confidence how my confidence sells so well. Yeah, your confidence does sell really well, but uh, <laughs> yeah. things are you know things are rocking, man. I just launched a paid ads mastermind. Uh, Felt, feel really good about it. I met with uh, I met with Jen this week. Uh, for those that don't know, Jen Cudmore, she's like a uh, a mindset money coach and uh, and it works spiritual, directly with Sharon. Spiritual money coach, I would call her. Spiritual yeah, money spiritual, coach. spiritual money coach. Sat down with her, had a conversation. Uh, you know, I launched uh, the Paid Ads Mastermind last week uh, and uh, we have four or five people already in the program now. Uh, really something I'm really passionate about. Something that uh, I've been wanting to do a group coaching program for a while and I just haven't really found, I haven't really felt Called to something. Why would somebody is, come to your mastermind, Cody? Let's do some more sales pitches. Real yeah, quick let's do some more sales pitches. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh, and uh, just so you guys know, just in case you're trying to tune out, the the guest we have sold his company for like twenty zillion dollars. Not not even kidding. And he helps agents tap into their database and how to get more referrals. But we are going to make you sit here and listen to us jam because 
It doesn't, it's, it's like not every day that you get somebody like this on the podcast. So why would somebody come to your mastermind, Cody? I'm curious as all hell. Yeah. Um, I, and I'm gonna I'm gonna give a plug uh, before I give a plug to myself. I'm gonna pl- plug to you. I uh, I chatted with a bunch of real agents this week. Uh, I did a training on sales. For some reason, they brought me in to talk about sales. You're the sales <laughs> guy. They came in to talk. Uh, they're like, you need to talk about lead conversion and sales. I'm like, I got this because I listened to far <laughs> too many crappy calls and like I've <laughs> and I've learned I've learned uh, a thing or two from you. But uh, paid ads mastermind. Uh, if you're a real estate agent, you are a home service business, you're running a real estate team, you have a VA, uh, and you want your team to learn how to run Facebook, Instagram, Google, YouTube, TikTok ads, uh, LinkedIn ads, uh, you're going to work with me on a weekly basis. And uh, it's one of the, the whole reason I launched the program is to kind of put the 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 keys back in that you, you put, allow you to have the keys to the driver's seat so that you can run ads, you can have, make sure your team is mm-hmm. constantly optimizing those ads in such a way that you're not held hostage to a marketing company. You and your team can know exactly the strategy and you can have it implemented on a weekly basis. So that's the whole reason I created the program. But tell me a little bit, you had a, an amazing week. Uh, yeah, we had a fun week. I, I started yeah. ice bathing again. I uh, found a great spot here in Medellin. So I did a, uh, I've been back on my ice bath routine back in the gym now that I'm back in my normal apartment for a few months. Um, recorded a ton of new content because the market's completely changed. I, I would say the market shifted again, just a consumer standpoint in the last 90 to 120 days. So this morning I got up at four, did my meditation. And then I was like, you know what? I need to record like two hours of content that we're going to be unleashing to our private clients inside the Real Estate Sales Academy um, on Monday or Tuesday of next week. I told Andy, hey, bro, you got a weekend op- You got a weekend job. And he's like, Yes, boss. <laughs> I don't know that he was happy about it, but uh, you know, like we we got to be we got to be like you said, fluid with the market. Um, but I'm really pumped. Like we got a bunch of new. I think we had like seven or eight people sign up in the last week, which is which is really good. But um, I'm really excited about just my health journey because I've been really really paying more attention to that and getting back into the ice bath, the infrared sauna. You know, I, I'm not connected to an air machine. I'm connected to what's called a nano V. Um, it's a device that helps like your cells regenerate and, um, yeah, man, like it's been a good week. I'm going to go buy my girlfriend a nice purse. Cause she spent like seven hours with me going over stuff like the last two weeks. So she suffered through sales training. She'll probably be a better salesperson than 90% of salespeople out there because we just hammered through content together. Cause I was like, babe, I need a sounding board on, you know, like what, what works and what doesn't. And she's like, cool, I guess. <laughs> I was like, it's Friday night. We're going to just sit here in, in bed and, and work. And she's like, okay, like that that's fine. Can we order ice cream? I'm like, no ice cream. I'm dying. My my blood pressure is high. I'm, so no ice cream and you have to help me work. And she's like, okay. So yeah, so we had a great week. Um, but I mean, I think we did enough plugging for this episode. I think we plugged yeah. more in this episode than we plugged in any other episode. So yeah. you want to introduce our guest? Because I actually used his service back in the day. It was pretty cool. Um, and now he's got a new platform, which I know we'll get into at the end, which I can only imagine is like the version 5.0 of what he used to have. So, um, you know, eight, eight figure entrepreneur, eight figure exeter, sold a company to Compass. I'm stealing your thunder, Cody. Why don't you, fit, why don't you take it away? Turn it on. We have uh, Zvi, Zvi Band with us and uh, I'm pumped because whenever you get the opportunity to chat with people that are doing things at a really high level, really giving back to the real estate community, really helping people stay in touch with their sphere, having experience from exits, having experience working with large national uh, brokerages, large national brands. Uh, you know, without further ado, why don't you give us kind of like the high level Cliff Notes version of how you, how the heck you got into the space, what you're up to now. I know that you had contactually back in the day. Now you're running a company called Relatable. Uh, give us like kind of like a, how the heck this actually happened how you sold the company, what you're up to now, and just kind of give our listeners kind of a 60 second Cliff Notes version of what you're up to. Sounds good. I thought we were talking about ice baths on this podcast. I was I probably, thought so too. I, Ryan, I came let's on go. About that. Let's All go. Right. Ice baths, hyperbaric chambers, red light therapy, exosomes, stem cells. Where do we stop? PEMF mats. Like, where do we start? Where do we stop? 
we just keep going, right? Like, you know, the one thing I know about biohackers is like, once you start pulling on that thread, there's no going back. And then you got thousands of dollars of supplements showing oh, up. Oh, yep. ozone, ozone therapy session just now before I came here. Like, where do we go from here, brother? I'm happy with my five minute ice bath and then we can just, uh, we can just stop there. But uh, <laughs> in all seriousness, uh, thanks for having me guys. Um, so yes, you know, my background is, I was, I'm actually a software developer by trade, but early on in my career, I learned that relationships were my most important asset. Uh, that's what led me to found Contactually back in 2011, which yes, we took it from an idea in Evernote to eight figures in revenue. Compass acquired us in 2019. Um, and we then built out a lot of the original Compass platform. Uh, however, I've learned that um, giving someone the tools like software is only part of the problem. So yes, I actually have uh, a great platform called Relatable. It's great. At, I, I say it's Contactually 2.0 um, you know, with thousands of customers on it. But really, I learned that what people really need in order to be effective is they need strategy, training, and guidance. So I wrote a book called Success in Your Sphere, which also came out in 2019. And nowadays, um, I also work in groups uh, with realtors around the country, helping them unblock themselves from getting their database more organized, and most importantly, being more engaged with their sphere of influence. That is just what we focus on. Everything I do is built around helping people build and maintain relationships. And then I do a lot of baths and supplements too. Also. Yeah. Yeah. And so does, yeah, let's so talk does, about that. So does Vic. So so does Vic. Um I want to start with so database. Nonchalant, so nonchalantly, Cody. Yeah, you're welcome. I want to start with <laughs> database because I think actually that I, let, let's go back. Let's go back. Cause we're we're talking in the green room about psychology. And I think if we don't understand why we do what we do then I don't think agents are going to actually understand. And it's, I mean, this goes like, this is for everybody in every business out there in the world. Everybody wants to chase new, but they, they don't take care of what they already have. Like one of the things we talked about is stop calling people past clients. Like if you haven't seen your doctor in a year, you don't say, oh, that was my past doctor. I'm going to go find a new one. No, you just haven't seen your doctor in a year. But we call them past clients because somebody termed that coin 1600 years ago when the dinosaurs roamed and it just stuck. But they're your, they, if they're your clients, the psychology around how you treat them is different. Like Cody's my friend. If I don't talk to him for three weeks, I miss him, but I don't say, Oh, Cody's a past friend of mine. No, he's just a friend I haven't talked to in three weeks because we're busy. So, yeah, like, no, absolutely. And I mean, this is even goes to what we initially envisioned behind Contactually, you know, now, you know, 12 years ago in that most people think about their the transaction as a line, right? right? It goes from like someone having no idea who I am and not working with me to nurturing them to all of a sudden them working with me and then that transaction over and a past client. But really we have to visualize as a whirlpool, right? Because yeah. yes, like transactions come out of it, but really like, you know, the relationships that we build, you know, with people that we're currently transacting with, people that we have transacted with in the past, those relationships we want to maintain forever, right? Why do you why, why do you think why do you think that the psychology of the entire real estate industry, because like that is a that is a coined term like Vikram said, the past client uh that we would work with. Like why do you think that this is so still so prevalent with when you have like SaaS companies like yours or you look at database like moving kind of into the database conversation, but also still remaining on the psychology behind why you think this is actually the thing. Like, why do people struggle to keep their database organized, consistently follow up with their clients? Like, why does it feel so taboo that like, it's like, oh, I got to follow up with a with a client or like, why do you think that exists? Yeah. So uh, we we always ask uh, at the beginning of Good Sphere programs, like, tell us all the reasons why you're not staying in touch with clients. And they list out all sorts of things like, feeling salesy, it's been too long, don't know who to talk to, don't have time, uh, family needs, et cetera. Don't everything worry, really comes, yeah. Everything really comes down to two things. Number one, time. And number two, fear. Now on the time side, let like let's face it, like yo, uh, Vic and I, like with all the weird things we do for our bodies and everything like that, we are in oh, the I small no time for work. Right. 
I have yeah. no time for work. <laughs> it's like, how can you when you have a three hour ice bath every morning, right? <laughs> it's like um, five minutes, but yes, I like it. But in all serious in all seriousness, right? If think about this, like if we knew, if all of us were thinking about what is best for us for the long term, we would all be working out of the gym every day, you know, eating salads and healthy proteins. But what do most of us do? No, it feels better right now in the short term to watch Netflix, sit on the couch and eat pizza. Um, so we humans are wired back to like the caveman days to only think about what is going to be a benefit for us in the short term. Because the long term didn't exist. Like our ancestors were more worried about getting eaten by a saber toothed tiger than thinking about, you know, all right, well, do I have a roof over my head in six months? Like that, that just wasn't part of their frame of mind. Fast forward to today, we do have to think about mainly what does our business look like in the future, but we're wired to think about the present. So that's why, you know, honestly, when we wake up in the morning, what are we doing? Are we, you know, going and reaching out to people that we've transacted with in the past, reaching out to our sphere, proactively engaging with people that we have in a while? No, we open up our email to see like what new messages have come our way. Maybe some random lead has shown up um, versus actually going to where our long-term business comes from. So that's one of the big core ones. We also get a dopamine hit from chasing new, and we think that the new is what's, you know, the the agent mindset, unfortunately, is because, you know, like we were talking about in the green room, if agents actually followed up with their clients, I, I think you said the stat was 88% said they would work, 88% of people that you've transacted would work with you again, but only 12% do because you stopped staying in contact and somebody else came in and stole your girl. Like you basically had a girlfriend or a boyfriend and you stopped watering the grass and somebody's like, oh, that's a nice patch of grass. I'm going to take it. What When you say fear, I have a definition that I, I think is why they have fear. But what do you, what have you guys found in your data around agent fear with following up with past clients? Yeah. Or yeah. And we clients we they've transacted the, with. Yeah. We could talk about the reasons and then we can again go back down to our psychology to understand right. why that happens. You know, we, um, we think that, oh, you know, I haven't spoken to that person in two years. They're going to forget me or they're going to be really angry that I haven't spoken to them, right? Uh, right. They, I don't know what to say to be of value. If I reach out, that's going to sound salesy, right? And all of these reasons we, sh- we, we, th- we throw in front and I don't know how to be of value to people. And unfortunately, again, going back to our psychology, again, we are wired to be in community with others. Like we could not survive from the moment we, you know, we exit the womb. We could not survive without other people, without social relationships. So therefore doing anything that we think might be a little socially awkward, just like, you know, going up to someone at the bar, there's that little fear of like, oh, I hope I don't get rejected. It's all of those reasons why we say, oh, you know what? Yeah, like I'll reach out to them tomorrow. It feels much better to like, again, open up my email to see who's like looking and talking to me or scroll Facebook than do the thing that is a little bit socially uncomfortable and reach out to a past client that we haven't spoken to in a couple of years. There, I said past client. Um, I know it, it's hard. It's we're all, we're all trained. We're all trained to say it. <laughs> but, and again, it goes like so from a, from a, primitive mindset. If we ruin the relationship inside the tribe, the tribe throws us out into the wild and then we get eaten by a bear or we freeze at night. So we have to maintain the relationship. So we would rather ignore the relationship. My opinion is people don't know what to say. And then they mindset, right? Words matter. So from a mindset, we call them past, which means they're done. They're gone. They're not mine. But from a primitive mindset and you know, I don't know who said it, but one of my friends told me on Facebook, he, he sent me a message on Facebook after a post. He said, humans are just monkeys that wear cool clothes, drive cool cars and live in funny and like what a, a monkey would think is a funny looking house. But we're not much different than when we we're back in the Stone Age and we're always thinking about survival. And so if we ignore the relationship, we still feel like we have a part of the relationship. Whereas if we ruin the relationship, then we get thrown out to die and we have to fend for ourselves. Exactly. And 
that is what I think like, that's why this conversation is so powerful because one of the mantras that I built up over the past few years is this idea that awareness yields transformation. So the more we understand, oh, I, I, there's someone I haven't spoken in a couple of years. I'm not sure what to say. I'm worried that they're going to hate me, that they're going to go on Facebook and, you know, say, never work with this person again. They don't <laughs> Google, give me a one star review. The more I realize like, oh, no, that's just how I'm wired. That's not right. reality. Then I can say, <laughs> oh, okay, cool. I can move past it. Yes, I love it. You've done some Tony Robbins, it sounds like. <laughs> so once once a so let's say, you know, from a psychology standpoint, somebody is is out there and they're saying, Okay, like I'm ready to move past the feeling that these are past clients. I'm ready to move past the fear. I'm ready to move past the the time uh excuse that I don't have enough time. And they want to actually build a successful sphere business. They want to build but they want to build better relationships because I find it always find it so interesting when agents are like, I built my entire business based off referrals, but then they don't actually nurture their sphere. It's like we're in a relationship based business, but we don't actually build relationships. What can agents, team leads, brokers do in order to foster that in their teams, in order to foster that in their own business? Like, what are some things that you're seeing using tech or using? Uh, you know, just being of service to people. Like, what can agents do tactically that will allow them to build the sphere business that they want to build? Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, at the end of the day, what it comes down to is finding and building the simplest systems possible that they can implement repeatedly. So, case in point, I'm um, obviously like, you know, I've now built three CRMs, uh, you know, contactually, the company CRM and now relatable. Um, I used to think that you need to have like six different types of organization systems and everything like that. But again, the simplest thing that we can do is to open up our database and ask ourselves three questions. Do I love this person? Do I just kind of like this person? Or do I not really know or care about this person? And if I could say, all right, which one of those three is it? Then I could say, great, cool. I've organized my, I've organized that contact. I don't need to have them in, you know, open house leads in Van Nuys. We're looking for like a two bedroom and people who like dogs, you know, who are also like, you know, into cold plunges. Like, no, forget that. Like simple systems. Cause all we need to do, for example, with our database is say, all right, I've got a few minutes. Who do I want to engage with? Who is a person that has the highest likelihood of leading to an additional transaction? Great. It's the people I have a good relationship with. Let's make sure I'm in touch with that. It, it, it's like simple, simple examples like that. Hey, what's up? If you're a real estate agent that is not converting at least two deals a month, join me inside the Real Estate Sales Academy where I will teach you exactly what to say, how to say it, so that we prevent objections and we don't create sales resistance from our prospects. If you're not doing at least two deals a month, comment trial below because I'm going to give you an opportunity to try our program before you buy it. You're going to get three live coaching calls with me who sold over $250 million in real estate, millions of dollars of Cutco knives for free because I believe in try before you buy proof over promise. See you inside comment trial below. It's so funny that you were having this conversation because I was literally having this conversation with our business developers the other day where I was like, guys, like we have hundreds and some, some might like one, I have one guy who has thousands of people in his pipeline. Uh, People like a lot of the people he's spoken to before, but it's like we constantly chase the new thing when it's like we have 190 people th that you have spoken to in the past that for some way, some reason, they decided not to choose us. It's like that is like low hanging fruit where it's like we had a conversation and we didn't uncover the person's need or we didn't uncover exactly like but we've we've ha we've communicated with these people in the past. It's like when we're when you're running lead gen or you're doing things, it's so easy to see a person as like a number. And we're like this happens in corporate America, where you know it's like you like people feel like they're just another number in 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 the wheel. When people are actively reaching out or agents are actively reaching out, how do they allow the person on the other end to not just feel like another number? Like how do how do you? advised based on the conversations that you've seen. You've probably seen thousands. 
you've seen thousands of agents do this well, and you've probably seen thousands of agents do this not so well. So what does good conversation and good relationship look like to you in your mind? Yeah, it's funny. Um, there are lots of like, obviously more advanced strategies we could talk about and gifting ideas and everything like that. But uh, Vic and Cody, like you would not believe like the, you probably actually would, the most simplest strategy when it comes to outreach, again, goes back to what we were talking about earlier, which is we are deeply social creatures. And we we seek to know that we belong. We seek to know that people care about us. And therefore, one of the best things that real estate professionals can do, and other sales professionals too, is remember, you're dealing with these you know high intensity, high emotional transactions. You want to know, like, and trust the people that you're working with. So the most effective thing that our clients um, do is very simple. They send a text message saying, hey, just thinking of you, hope all is well, no need to respond. You don't need to say, hey, if you're looking to buy or sell real estate in the next 30 days, like give me a call. They'll reach out to you because they know who you are, right? They're getting other messaging from you. But at the day, just showing you care, like that one text message alone, I know three clients in Goodsphere alone that like got a listing yesterday because we did a workshop at 10 a.m. walking them through that. The complexity that we bring in, right? And, and I can speak to this, Cody can speak to this. I'm sure you can speak to this. The level of complexity that we feel we need to bring into everything we do in our life is only there to hold us back. It's only there to keep us in our safety zone because anything that we do to grow our mind is going to resist. So if we can add complexity, then we don't actually have to do the work, which is, oh no, I'm going to get thrown out of the lion. I'm going to get thrown out of the cave. I'm going to have to fend myself against the lion. I'm going to freeze at night. And it all comes back to the, everything we do comes back to that simple thing is that we don't have to fight the system or make it super complex to win. When you're speaking with agents, because you're, you're, you're speaking to thousands of agents, it sounds like you've dealt with thousands of agents over the years. When you're speaking with agents and you tell them the simplicity strategy, what is their mindset? Oh, absolutely. It's, it's, it's dismissal, right? Why? Because why, why, they, do they, why do we dismiss things that are so easy? Because if it was that simple, more people would do it. And now here's the thing, right? Like, uh, Vic, because you also brought up a key thing. You said is easy. It's not easy. Simple is right. not easy. Fair. Because what we're trying to do is to have simple systems implemented repeatedly. Case in point, you know, uh, since selling contactually, I've lost like 55 pounds. And as you know, there's tons of like, you know, cool things you can do and diets and fads and try this supplement, try this. But honestly, what it comes down to is eat less, eat better and work out more. That like, that's, that's really the it. Like there's no other magic pill, but we keep looking for things because there's got to be a better solution because otherwise more people will do it. What we miss out is that it's again, watching what you eat every single day, right? So yes, organizing your database, you think like, all right, just put them in like love, like don't know, don't care. Yeah, that's really easy. And now do it tomorrow and the day after and the day after, keep doing it. And when you fall short, you pick, you pick back up. When you feel stuck, you keep doing it. When business takes off, you keep doing it. We confuse simple and easy way too often. Simple is really, really hard if you have to do it repeatedly. So how do we build a simple system right? How do we build a simple system? So let's say you got an agent that's got a thousand people in their database, right? They have online leads, they have people they've met at open houses, right? We just dumped all of our leads into just one big pile of these are leads. And it didn't matter where we met them from. And it was like, it was chaotic. Cause I, I mean, we had four or 5,000 people, but let's say somebody has got 500, a thousand people in their, in their CRM that they're using. Um, I heard Relatable's pretty pretty solid. So if you guys are not using Relatable, quick plug. Um, let's say that you got you got these people. How do we create the system? Like, how do we make it super easy for somebody? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, this is where we think about 
at the end of the day, what, what are we trying to do? We're trying to say, uh, ask ourselves, who do I talk to? When should I engage with them? And what should I say? Well, to answer the who should I talk to, it's pretty simple. There are some people in my sphere who are of higher priority than others. I want to make sure I can identify those people. Hence why we think about just love, like, don't know, don't care. We can go in psychology if we want to, um, probably on another podcast. Um, but you know, the love, like, don't know, don't care. And then say, all right, I have to do this consistently because I'm always meeting new people. Let me just do a few today and a few tomorrow. And okay, well, I want to do this consistently. What is the consistent system? I mean, as we all know, it's just like either finding accountability buddy or time blocking. Um, we've built out systems to help people maintain consistency, but it's finding those like small little actions and then building our own engine to do it repeatedly. So it can just be that simple. And then of course, we comes to engagement. We say, you know, hey, every day pick off, don't send a blast message to 300 people because then 150 are going to respond and 50 are going to meet for coffee and 10 are going to get on the phone and all of a sudden you'll <laughs> burned out, right? And never going to do it again. You just yeah. do a few a day as part of that regular routine. I want to uh, close out with a, uh, a question uh, around psychology um, because I think that this space attracts a lot of amazing people. There's a lot of amazing agents out there that do really, really cool things. And we've had the opportunity to interview them, a lot of them on the podcast. And there's just a lot of people that get into the space and they just, they're not sure what they're, they're getting themselves into, uh, which is like why I said the other day on social, and I know Vic saw this, like, I think most agents should join a team so they get the pro the systems and the processes uh, underway so that they can understand how to be an entrepreneur. Like I think back to even when I started my agency, you know, five, six years ago, I had, I had business partners that had already done it before me and, you know, now I went out on my own. Uh, but I learned a lot from the systems and the processes from hiring coaches, from like learning how to do this thing at scale, like learning how to leverage. Like what is your take on... 2023 real estate psychology and the the psychology of the agent do you use like because 10 15 20 years ago teams were not a thing like you know this is this is a newer thing uh, and and the 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 landscape is changing where the consumer is requiring more uh you know but they're getting because with tech and you're a tech guy like where do you see the landscape of the real estate agent headed in the 24, 25, 20, 30? You know, like where where do you see the future of real estate going from a tech perspective, but also an agent perspective? Yeah. I mean, and I actually see this uh, you know, even outside of real estate, you know, more and more of my friends are becoming solopreneurs. Uh, why? Because one person or a small team with the right technology and systems can outperform, you know, you know, uh, a whole number of people, right? So um, I very much believe that, yes, like, you know, starting off, like you want to work with a team or you want to find a mentor, or at least one business partner you want to work with, but then um, always to look at what you are doing and saying, hey, how can technology help me with this? Not, I heard this cool idea at a sales meeting, right? You know, uh, like, I'm just going to copy that, but like really, really, what am I doing? How am I operating? And how can technology help me? Case in point, you know, we've seen a lot of people like, you know, play around with chat TPT and they generate a bunch of dumb sales letters and then they like drop entirely instead to say, all right, well, there's this really cool new technology. How can it help me what I'm doing today? And then sure enough, you can find it. Um, so I, I believe the technology will only get better, which will also allow us to spend more time doing what we do best, which is building relationships. We love it, brothers. V, man, I want to say thank you at the bottom of my heart. If somebody were to want to reach out to you, they want to have a conversation, they want to learn a little, little bit more about your platforms, where's the best place that we can send them to to uh, have a conversation with you or to learn more about what you're doing? Yeah, absolutely. So you can just go to uh, relatable.one uh, to see more about Relatable, uh, the CRM that uh, I built. If people are interested in uh, unblocking themselves from being more engaged with their sphere, they can go to goodsphere.com. And otherwise, I'm on every social platform, including like, you know, threads, which I'm not sure anyone's using anymore. 
Um, but I, uh, um, but you can search for Zvi Band. Luckily, there's only one of me, so I'm very easy to find. It so much knowledge, you guys. If you got knowledge out of this, drop a comment, subscribe, like the channel. We are dropping three to five podcasts every single week, just like this. It's a lot of fun. It's a lot of work, but it's a lot of fun because we get people like Z that drops insane amounts of knowledge every single week for you so that you don't have to go out and spend money on coaches. You could just do it here. All we ask for is a like, subscribe, a comment. Cody, take it away, brother. Z, I want to say thank you. And I want to say thank you for tuning into another episode of the RE Agent Podcast. We'll see you soon.